How you guys doing? Good. Good. So how is that? How's the, everything uh, with the unit here heading into the uh, heading into the opening game? And uh, I guess we want to start up front and kind of know what to expect from the uh, the uh, specialists. But uh, how are you with the front yeah. line and, and um, you know y'all settled on a group and now they're ready to. They look like they got the big matchup this week too. Yeah, them. I think you know you know this each week in the National Football League. You know it's going to be based off how well you protect the quarterback. Again, with all the teams we play, specifically Philadelphia, um, they have good players in all three levels of the defense, specifically up front. Um, and it's gonna be our job offensively as coaches uh, to get our guys prepared for a talented defense. I don't know much about Singleton. How does he flash in their, in their operation? As yeah, sure. I mean, he's a player that, you know, again, you can really say this for a lot of the guys in their defense, if not all of them. Uh, you can tell he's got football savviness, football instincts. Um, he's a good overround football player. And again, I think these guys, uh, just knowing how they've been coached in the past and how they you know, potentially coached this year, um, they're going to fly around the football. So we have to be aware of that. And McLeod on the back end, I guess, you know, traditionally the strong safety gets the tight end, but we don't know how they're going to match sure. up. But, but McLeod, uh, you know, how's he playing for them in, in on the back end? Yeah, so again, you know, we'll see where their lineups go in terms of uh, who's going to be out there and who's not. But again, it's a veteran player. They've got guys, you know, in, in my past, I feel like I played Philadelphia a number of times. Uh, same, a lot of same faces are going to be out there um, this Sunday that I've, I've played in the past. And McLeod's another guy who is a veteran guy, knows where he needs to be, understands the, uh, the structure of the defenses and what offenses are trying to do. But again, he's going to present another challenge for us as well. How do you handle Fletcher Cox with essentially a rookie and a guy who's really more than a few games? Sure. How, how do you go about Fletcher that? Cox, I mean, again, you know, there's other guys in the defense that have played really good football. I mean, Fletcher Cox has proven over years of being a really dominant, uh, impactful player. And so, again, you know, when you play against guys like that and other guys that are around him that help him do his job, you know, we're going to have to have a plan for, you know, a, a number of these guys. And, and Fletcher Cox, like I said before, is a guy that I played before um, as a coach. And, and I respect uh, his overall talent and his ability to disrupt games. So, obviously, we're going to have to have a plan for, for him and other players that can do that against us. About him that makes him so difficult. Yeah, I think you look at his size, athleticism, his speed, tenacity. Um, he plays with a certain edge. I think a lot of their defensive guys do that, um, that I've played in the past. Um, and you've got, they're built to disrupt. And again, that, that, pro, that is always going to provide challenges for us offensively. And it's our job to try to neutralize that. But Fletcher Cox is a, has been a great player in this league. And again, we expect the same uh, this week as well. With Josh Rosen, you know, last night you, get, you had him for like a second the last time. Sure. Last How much of the offense does he conceivably know at this point? Yeah, I think what Josh was doing, he's doing a great job of coming in and coming in early, staying late, and trying to grasp and understand as much as the offense as possible. Understanding that he's gonna, he's going to be behind in terms of he wasn't here for the whole off season and most of training camp. So again, what we have him do. Right is start from the day one install, learn it from there, understand the, the 101 of each play in terms of the basics of them, and then we'll grow with him as he continues to show us what he can and can't do. And again, we like to play to his strengths and understand, and as we get to know him, right, how he ticks and how he goes out there, you know, again, we'll start to cater things more to his direction as well. This is maybe a minutia question, but how do you decide that who's the backup quarterback? Is it a guy that maybe you're st is still learning the offense? Sure. Josh has more experience than Josh, or is it, you know, a guy like Felipe who has been yeah, there longer? I think for us, more importantly, you know, regardless of who is that number two quarterback, it's a situation if that number two quarterback has to play, that we have a plan in place for that guy. So understanding the strengths of both those players, um, understanding what they do well, and making sure that if those guys had to play, that we cater to that. And that's that's really for all players. And I know quarterback obviously sticks out for that reason. But again, you'd like to get to know the strengths of the players and make sure that you play to them. Link, as far as Wayne Gallman goes, where do you really see him fitting in in this offense? Because sure, you know, we haven't seen him. Yeah, so you know Wayne's a guy that last year had some production. You know, in terms of hit the free agency market, went to San Francisco. Uh, we were able and fortunate enough to get him um, after San Francisco. And again, he's another guy that we're going to bring in here. 
Uh, we have a certain standard in which we want the guys to come in and practice, learn, and we're co constantly evaluating not just him, but every position, and we want to see how well he picks up things, how well he practices, and then our ability to coach him, right, and the things that he needs to do better, right, is what we're here for. So we're going to continue to bring him along in that process. Going back to Jalen Mayfield specifically, how much does, you know, Jake Matthews being beside him, do you put more on Jake's plate just because you know that, you know, Jalen doesn't have those sure. pro reps? Like, well, how sure. do y'all handle that? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, in terms of, again, uh, the one thing that I learned as a, a player, a coach a long time ago is, you know, once you become an NFL player, you're a professional. So there's certain things that are asked of you in your job requirement. And, you know, no different than, you know, Jake's asked to do a certain job. Jalen will be asked to do a certain job if he's in there, as well as anybody else in the offense line or for the offense. So, again, we don't want guys doing someone else's job. We want them to do their job. And it's the same thing we'll ask of anybody who has to play for us. Um, I think one of the biggest questions that I had going into just this year was what Mike Davis's workload was going to be. Is sure. that a constant evaluation game in and game out, or do you all have a place where you all want him? Yeah, I think for us, you know, again, the way that we'll, we'll go about the running back position is, you know, with whoever's out there, you know, we want them to get a feel for how we're running the football, how's it going up front. Um, in terms of a quota or certain numbers that we want, you know, we don't approach it that way. It's more about, you know, again, with my pass with Mike and Cordero, like, again, I think I have a decent feel. Coach Smith obviously has now been around these guys for months, has a decent feel. And again, how he calls the game is how he sits, sees fit for those running backs to go out there and play. And, and again, I, I expect those guys to go out and do their jobs. Something that we talked to Arthur about yesterday that I thought was interesting, he was like, you know, when you're preparing for like a week one opponent where you have a new staff with a new team, it could almost be like preparing for a bowl game where you have so much that sure. you're looking at and there's right. a lot of input, not a lot of output. I guess for you and your role of setting the table for him, like what is your goal in kind of paring that down yeah, this week. And, I, and I think it's for all of us as the offensive staff, and obviously Coach Smith's involved in all of this, is, you know, again, going back to the things that we want our identity to be, um, things that we practice in training camp, uh, things that we believe in core-wise. And again, you know, it's week one, as well as I know this defensive coordinator on a personal level. You know, he could do things on a professional level that, you know, that he decides to do, and we have to adjust. And that, that, that's why it's important uh, for us to understand that, you know, we're going to go about it and do our job understand what our rules are, apply our rules if they give us something that's different, um, and go out and, and it's our job as coaches as the game progresses to make those adjustments if they're giving us something uh, that we need to adjust. So it, it's a great great chess match in, in week one. Um, it goes for all the games, but specifically with this much time off before the first game, right, and, and not having a known coordinator in terms of him calling games before, sure. But again, it goes back to making sure that we do what we do well and, uh, and go out and apply our rules. Hey, Coach, I'm Tanisha Batiste. This is my first time having oh, a chance to meet you with 92 <laughs> the game, so uh, good to meet you. But just wanted to go back to questions on the O-line. This will be, of course, the first time that Matt Ryan will be working with Matt Hennessy at, at center for this period of time. When you think about all of the opportunity or the, the experience he had with Alex Matt, what have you kind of seen in Hennessy's progression and his preparation to get ready sure. to, to take on that role? No, that's a good question. And, Again, they had some experience last year, but now it's a full-time starter for Matt now this year where, you know, essentially, you know, it's his, he's out there competing. He did a great job in training camp competing for the starting position. Um, and he's also a great communicator. And you can tell the rapport that Matt has with him right now. It's awfully important between those two. Um, sometimes it's just nonverbal, the communication, uh, reading each other's body language or knowing what each other's supposed to be doing. And again, uh, that'll continue to grow each week as they face different challenges that are presented to them that um, they have to apply their roles to. And, and it's going to be fun to see those two guys grow together because you have a veteran player in Matt um, who's been and seen a, and done a lot of things and seen a lot of things. And you've got Matt uh, Hennessy who's going to go out there and apply you know, what he's been trained to do right now. And then obviously with the communication with Matt to go and execute the game plan. So we're excited to see it. From him just being that second year player, but having had the chance to be under Max tutelage, sure. do you think that that's helped him to progress that much quicker? Sure, that, and that's a good question. And I think Matt can answer that question, Hennessy, more than I could, because I wasn't obviously here for, um, for Mac uh, being here. But all I can say is since I've been in the building and Matt's been, Hennessy's been in the building, um, he's done everything we've asked in terms of being a pro um, at the center position. He's gone out and competed in training camp, uh, as well as OTAs. 
and again now, so we'll go out there and we'll go play and we'll adjust and we'll coach and we'll do those things and make each other better. And like I said, we're excited to see it. You, made, you just mentioned competition for Hennessy. How much of a competition was that in reality, considering? Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think. Play a preseason game. Sure, I think <laughs> for all of, and again, a lot of the things that we, you know, and I'm sure Coach Smith went through the, the preseason and the, and the different things for us, right? The OTA is the training camp, going down to Miami, going against other opponents, um, seeing guys, and again, for all those positions, right, seeing guys in different situations and how they're going to respond, right? So, again, you go in and you can go apples to apples in game reps, or you can go in a cumulative, a lot of the practice reps or situational things, or things that are just maybe come up and you ask them a question and see how they handle it and apply it when they're out in practice. And there's, again, different metrics to, for the competition, but Again, we wanted all those guys to feel the fact that they're going out there each day to compete for their job. And I think to this point, guys have taken that, that challenge and the guys have met that challenge. So at what point do you feel like Matt Hennessy won the job? Well, Matt went out there in training camp and OTAs and learned the system and went out there and through practice reps, right, and through Miami, you know, again, proven to us to go out there and be the day one starter here at center for us. And again, as we go through it, you know, this is the one thing I think it's beautiful about the NFL is I think it's a rarity when the same five offensive linemen play a whole season. So again, through what we did in training camp and through preseason football, right, developing the depth in certain guys at certain positions, and anybody has to be ready at any time. Time for a couple more guys. Yeah, uh, Coach, what's your sense of Kyle Pitts being ready for his first uh, uh, NFL game? Yeah, I mean, again, you're excited as a coach for any player that goes out there. Um, I'm sure Kyle's been asked that question. Uh, and for me, for not just Kyle, but the other players, I mean, it's a great opportunity. It's week one National Football League. I mean, being fortunate enough, being a part of this for a decent amount of time, uh, it's a tremendous feeling. You know, obviously you go out there and you want to see the work that you put in the spring and the summer, right? And you want to see how you go out there and adjust and adapt in the games. And this is a great challenge. And Philadelphia, you know, team-wise, specifically defense, is a great challenge for us offensively. And so we get a chance to go out there and see, as coaches, we get a chance to grow and communicate and adjust, right? And players get, to get out there and do what they love to do, which is go play football. Uh, going back to Porter Ross for a minute, how do you, you know, you were with him last year in Chicago. Mm -hmm. how, how do you view him? Do you view him as more of a running back? Do you view him still as more of a receiver? Where yeah, I mean, kind of yeah, so CP to me is, a, I mean, first and foremost, is a, is a tremendous football player. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's a running back to us that will go out there. And uh, again, I've been with CP now multiple years. I know how he ticks. I know what his mindset is. Um, he's a professional through and through. And so just like the rest of the guys that we have in this roster, what we ask of them, you know, we expect them to go out there and do their job. And again, CP to me is a guy who been there, done that in terms of the years in this league. And I'm excited to see him play on Sunday as well. Anything else? All right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right.